You know, for once, your report wasn't all nonsense, Henry. Really? Am I losing my touch? The Arctic does thaw out somewhat in the summer. The ice flows over the sea break up and melt or drift away. So the sea can be seen at last. And on the Arctic grasslands called the tundra, the top layer of earth defrosts, allowing plants to grow. Hmm, but what's that underneath? Vanilla ice cream? That's permafrost. Sounds like a refrigerator. Permafrost is a layer of ice just a few centimeters underground, which never melts, trapping water in the earth above it. This means plants can take root here, but not very deeply. So nothing grows very tall? Right, but each summer the tundra comes alive with grasses and flowers. And birds! Hey, birds aren't plants! Well, Henry, plants fuel the food chain, and with such a short summer, they grow thick and fast, making the Arctic suddenly a rich feeding ground for all sorts of animals, from nectar feeders to plant eaters to the hunters at the top of the food chain. I tried eating a chain once. My doctor said I needed more iron. Henry. Some animals, like the eider duck, fly in every year to feed and breed here, while the year-round residents stock up on fuel for the winter, which comes along again all too soon. Yeah, tell me about it. If I don't build some shelter soon, I'm going to be permafrost. Huh, rats. I'm sorry all your things got wet, Henry. Thanks. I just wish I had something defrosted to keep me warm, though. Look around you, Henry. The only thing you need to keep warm is... <gasps> Snow! Okay, Husky, let's get to work. Grab those tools. Get some snow. <laughs> Bring it over here. That's it. And the only kind of glue you need in the Arctic, an igloo. Come on, come on, we need more snow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Enough snow already. Henry, where are you? I'm in here. Looks like your husky friend's an expert igloo builder. Only one problem, he forgot the door. <gasps> You're just like one of the locals, Henry. A lot of them tunnel in the snow to keep from freezing, too. I can think of better ways. A trip to Honolulu, for one? Uh, it's not always an option. Land animals like lemmings have to make the most of what's within walking distance. Or digging distance. But excuse me, isn't it a bit crazy to try warming up in snow? Not at all. Because it's insulated, the temperature in a snow cave will always stay about the same, even if the air outside gets much, much colder. Like rabbits do, lemmings live in huge colonies, except in the snow, where they dig extensive tunnels. Sounds cool. Way cool. You dig, Naradio? No, Henrio. But the lemmings sure do, in the snow. Is it true what I heard about lemmings jumping off of cliffs together? Nah, that old story is completely false, Henry. The struggle for survival drives all animal behavior, lemmings included. Another year-round tundra resident is the snowy owl, perfectly camouflaged during the snowy months. Even its legs and feet are covered in white feathers. But shouldn't she be turning green in the grassy months? I'm sure she would if she could, Henry. She's at her most vulnerable now when her chicks have just hatched. Fortunately, she has a vigilant partner. Don't worry, darling. I've got my eye on things. Good day, honey bunch, because there are some foxes around who just... Hey! What was that? A fox dumpling. I'll get him. Chase him away! Get him! I'll do my best. Yeah! My hero! Oh, my baby wabies. Henry! Your daddy Waddy is the best Dowly Wally on the whole tundra. Henry, that was ridiculous. Why, thank you. I try to keep things amusing around here. <clears throat> oh, look, babies. Daddy's bringing us a mouse. Nesting on the ground, staying white in summer, coming out in the daytime, it all goes to show that for owls, the risk of being eaten is reduced in the Arctic. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs>
<laughs> nice work, Henry. I see you've finished your shelter. Come in, come in. It's even better inside. Wow, look at this place. There's only one thing wrong with it. What? Oh, it's still cold. <laughs> Sorry, Pooch. An Arctic dog's place is outside. <laughs> Haven't you forgotten something, Henry? Yes, but they don't get cable at the North Pole. I mean that another animal's body warmth can help you survive in cold temperatures. Oh. Right this way, my canine chum. Now, that's better. I knew mammals would come in handy one day. <laughs> it's not just mammals, Henry. Birds can help you keep toasty, too, like these king penguins from Antarctica. So that's why penguins stick so close together. They also use their body heat for something else. Warming up soup? No, incubating their eggs. They invest a lot of effort and energy to make sure the chick inside has the best chance at survival. So why are they treating the egg like a soccer ball? The female is carefully passing the egg to the male. It would freeze in minutes if it rolled onto the ground, so the male has to hold it on his feet for protection until it's ready to hatch. Papa Penguin covers it in flappy folds of skin for protection. Their feet even work like an electric blanket, with blood circulating close to the surface for extra warmth. That's amazing! Mom always says my dad's got cold feet. Winter is setting in. The sun slips below the Antarctic horizon, and all the female penguins have left for warmer grounds. Leaving the daddy penguins to exit all by themselves? How are they supposed to find food if they can't move from the spot? They don't. Protecting their precious cargo is a male penguin's only concern. And now, Henry, after three whole months, here's what all the effort was about. Hey, it's breaking the egg. How else is a brand new hatchling supposed to get out? Uh, a face only a daddy could love. Time's up, kiddo. Come on out of there. Oh, not quite ready yet. All right, back in you go. And now, ladies and gentle lizards, it's time for Henry's amazing Golden Gecko Awards. The winners of my all-time best amazing polar animal are... In third place, those fluffy little fur balls who think they're really snow plows, the lovable lemmings. And in second place, this guy's got such a big head, the polar ice cap won't fit him. It's the polar bear. But tonight's Golden Gecko Award goes to a real pole star in its own right, the Arctic Turn. These birds are so dedicated to polar living, they commute back and forth between the two poles, north and south, every year. Wow, they fly from one end of the world to the other? That's... Amazing? Yep. Turns spend as much time in the summer sun as possible. With the motto, daytime is playtime, the turns enjoy the 24-hour Arctic sun, taking time to lay some eggs, have some chicks, and soak up some rays. But winter's not for these birds, and so, with the chicks only a few weeks old, they wing it! Flying with grace, speed, and utmost efficiency, south across Europe. Alors, bon voyage, ma petite flying friend! Across the sands and grasslands of Africa. Dad, can we stop for burgers? Sorry, kids, but there's a fly-through fish place around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Following the coastline all the way, they reach the Antarctic in time to enjoy a second dose of round-the-clock sun. Finally, taking a break on some floating pack ice, the tern sees more sun and flies many more miles in its 30-year lifespan than any other bird on Earth. 
So although we've given the Golden Gecko to some high flyers before, tonight, winning for grace, stamina, and a sunny disposition, it's time to turn how to turn. Get it? Had enough of polar living, Henry? It was fun, but I was starting to feel like a frozen green bean. So why the harness? I want to take one of those icebergs home for a souvenir. Then I can have snow anytime I want to. An iceberg, huh? Don't you think it's a bit big to carry? Excuse me? Well, that's just the tip. 90% of an iceberg is hidden underwater. Oh, I have a very strong husky, you know. Come on, mush, mush. Hey, he's not mushing. Careful, Henry. What if the straps... Break! Come back! Oh, no! I'm stranded! Uh-oh, Henry. It looks like you just can't get away from those amazing polar animals. <laughs> <laughs>